All right, welcome back. We are in Relead session two. Thank you everybody for joining me today. And also thanks for understanding on the change. Uh, as we mentioned in session one, these will be on Wednesday at 11.30 Eastern Standard Time. Sometimes there will be something that comes up that causes us to have to change that. Uh, and when we do, we will always make sure that you have plenty of notice. Because uh, we are, um, we had to move it to today, we are going to record this one and send this one out just because we understand some people already had things scheduled for today at 1130 Eastern Standard Time. So uh, we are recording this one. We will not be sharing uh, these moving forward uh, because we really want to keep the, the uh, people coming to the actual sessions. You don't get the same effect uh, when you're you're maybe saying yeah, I'll catch it later, you know, I know how that is. I'll watch it later You know things get busy things happen in this business and you don't get get around to it So first things first we got some housekeeping uh, So thank you again for understanding on the time change again We are Wednesdays at 1130 Eastern with the exception of a time or two. We may have to move it. I do want to share with you we had a um, Participant a lot of you shared use the hashtag lover you hashtag relead which we Thank you for doing that. Uh, it really just helps us with awareness and get the word out for what we're trying to do in the industry. Uh, if you couldn't tell by the first session, I am on a path to change millions of lives in this industry and I won't stop until I do. So thank you for helping us get the word out. And because you did that, we got some giveaways. I'm giving away the, uh, we put together an annual planner every single year. This is put together by real estate agents, for real estate agents, it's a Glover U planner. I think it sells for like 25 bucks. We're giving away that. And we're also giving this stay cool water bottle. I promise you, I use this thing all the time and uh, stuff stays cold in here for like three, four hours. So the planner and the water bottle is going out. And by the way, every week we're going to be giving some giveaways to this particular week. Uh, let me share with you who our winner is before we get into the session. Uh, let me see here. Just a second, share. All right. And there you have it, Darlene Reese. Congratulations, you are the lucky winner of some Live Unreal stuff. Next week, I'm giving out uh, Nike gear, hats, backpacks. We got all kinds of cool stuff. Whenever you're using the hashtag Glover you or hashtag Relead, we're going in and searching for that. And each week, we're going to be giving some stuff away. All right, so congratulations, Darlene. Thank you there. I love uh, you, you getting the, the, the kids involved in at an early age, helping them develop their leadership skills as well. All right, let's go ahead and get into the content. You should have your workbook printed. If not by now, make sure you get that. We are on session two. We're going to dive in. Uh, the topic of today is developing the real estate broker owner millionaire mindset and habits. All right, we wanted to start with this as kind of like the foundation because what we're going to be talking about the next 18 weeks doesn't matter if your mindset isn't there, if your habits aren't there, if your beliefs aren't there. So even though a lot of what we're going to cover over the next uh, 17, 18 weeks, whatever we have left, will be a lot of tactical tools and ideas and strategies and things that I've implemented throughout the year. Uh, today's is more so, who do I have to become? What is my what does my mindset need to look like? What habits do I have to have in order to to lead a successful team in order to lead a successful organization. So know that that each step that I'm going to share builds upon the next step, all right? And when all is said and done, by the way, when these, these 18 weeks are over, you're gonna have an entire, you're gonna be able to take all this stuff or take your notes and put it into a training manual, manual and now you've got something either to take back to your leadership team or to work with your right hand on how to implement that into your business, into your company. I know a lot of you have successful organizations. My goal is just to help you get better, even if you've already got a successful organization. Reminder, this, this relead is for lead agents. It's for brokers. It's for owners. It's for investors. It's for salespeople or sales managers. Anybody that's, that's wanting to be a better leader in the real estate industry, wanting to lead a team, wanting to lead a brokerage, wanting to build a big business. So from time to time, I may make comments where I'll say, you know, if you're a broker owner or if you're a lead agent, either way, they, it's the same. Broker owner, lead agents, it's all the same. Same skills are required there. All right. Remember, I'm on the ground every day in sales. So a lot of times I'll talk about salespeople and what, what it means to be a great salesperson. A lot of what I'm sharing with you are things that I'm sharing with our team uh, because I believe in leading by example and, and therefore I'm on the ground, so you'll hear me say a lot of stuff that relates to being on the ground and being in the trenches with your people. All right, so let's talk about today's particular topic. 
okay? Developing that millionaire mindset. Now, of course, you may be thinking, well, Jeff, I'm already, you know, a millionaire. I don't really need this stuff, you know? Well, let's let's have a real be honest for a second. It's pretty easy to be a millionaire nowadays, right? Millionaire is, is essentially just wealth, right? You could go, you could buy 10, 10 investment properties for $100,000 a piece, own them free and clear, and by rule, technically, you're, you're a millionaire, right? Assuming you don't have any debt or assuming, assuming you don't have any back taxes. So it's actually pretty easy to be a millionaire today. What I'm talking about is developing a millionaire mindset of someone who generates a million dollars of profits or more every single year. Now, for some of you may say, hey, I'm bringing in five million a year between these X amount of locations. Well, what if what if you had 50 locations all netting a million dollars in profit, all right? So a lot of what I'm gonna talk about today is getting you to, or really even over the next 18 weeks, getting you to a point of receiving a million, right? And having taxable income of a million, not just being a millionaire, even though I use the term millionaire mindset and habits, all right? What I'm going to share with you over the next 30 minutes or so, because we're always gonna end, you know, probably 10 minutes after the hour, 15 minutes after the hour. What I'm going to share to you, with you today is a collection of 17 years of doing this, day in, day out, working around some of the best in the industry. I've had the, the very fortune of, of working closely with some serious mentors, right? Paul and Kathy Schweitzer, Floyd Wickman, Mike Ferry, Gary Keller. These are, are not people that are thinking like millionaires, they're thinking like billionaires and behaving like billionaires. And so, I'm going to share with you the culmination of things that I've observed through the years. And also, if you're not familiar with, we have a head coach. Her name is Kate Simon. Uh, these are notes. I asked, I gave Kate an assignment back before our last event down in Orlando. And I said, Kate, I want you to think about all the things that you observe of my behavior and my mindset. Think about all the things that you want. Because Kate, by the way, we started working together in 2005. I was teaching a training class for my former brokerage. and she was a student in that class. She was a student. In, I say student because she was a student in college. Her dad brought her to say, hey, I want you to start learning how to think bigger and think, you know, more like a successful real estate agent. And so I've, I asked Kate, this was back before an event in Orlando, to put together the list of, all right, what are all the things that you've observed about me as a leader in the real estate industry? Think, because she, she started, she was like our first, one of our first ISAs, uh, then became a, 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 an awesome rookie for us, and then started her own business, moved out to California. Uh, she's been with me through everything. So she's observed how we operate. And so I asked her to put together a list of all the things you observed about how we operated or how I operated as your leader. I then took that list and combined it with the list of, of the observations that I've had of those that have gone before me or those that I've spent time around and, and really discovered how it is that people think in order to be a great leader. Because none of what we're going to share over the next 17, 18 weeks matters until you're thinking straight. And it's amazing to me and you know who these people are. I meet so many successful real estate agents from around the country who, who appear to be successful. They have a successful business. They do great numbers. They do great volume. And then I get into conversation with them, and, and it's like they're, something's missing. They're, they're lacking depth. Uh, they're lacking uh, knowledge. Something's missing. And so you know when you're dealing with someone that thinks big and, and is a leader in the real estate industry and thinks like a millionaire income earner not just a millionaire wealth person, all right? So let's talk about the last thing before I get into my points. I've got, I don't know, 28, 26, 28 points to share with you. I know a lot of you log on to something like this. You're, oh, he's talking about mindset. I'm already good on mindset, right? Remember, I wrote this down uh, just this morning. I was thinking on my way in. I wrote down, most equate success to a good mindset, meaning if, I'm, if I feel successful and I'm having success, then that must mean I have a great mindset. I wrote down, if you're successful, you must have a good mindset. Wrong. Mindset isn't just think positive and be optimistic, right? I'm not here to give you the rah-rah. This isn't going to be a motivational speech today. Mindset is strategy. It's toughness. It's fast decision-making. It's strong habits, all right? So when you think about, you know, because listen, I've been guilty of it myself. I don't need to go to that. My mindset's good enough. That's just rah-rah. That's just motivational. Well, and by the way, some of those are rah-rah motivational. But for a lot of you that are on this session, you don't need the rah-rah and the motivation. You're already good. You feel good about where you're at. You're successful. Your bank account looks good. You've got a couple million bucks in the bank, whatever it is. You don't need the rah-rah. You don't need a strong mindset. 
Well, mindset does not equate to success. Mindset is strategy, mental toughness, quick decision making, strong habits. That's what mindset is and that's what we're gonna talk about today. So go ahead and open up your workbook. I'm gonna start with point number one. These are millionaire real estate leaders, 26 to 28, depending on how we get through points on developing that millionaire mindset as a leader in the industry. Now, some of you are saying, well, Jeff, I was down at your summit in Orlando. Is this going to be the same thing? Because if it is, I can just sign off now. Number one, no, it's not the same thing because I went back and modified these specifically to speak to leaders in the industry. Sometimes it's not to hear things two, three times because chances are you're in a different spot in your life right now than you were three weeks ago or three months ago. All right. So if some of these sound repeat to you, good, good. Thing. All right. I wrote down number one the millionaire real estate leader develops a strong understanding that you're going to have to do things that most others aren't willing to do to achieve great success. A millionaire real estate leader develops a strong understanding that you're going to have to do things that most others aren't willing to do to achieve great success. Now you're saying, well, Jeff, yeah, that's like you, you pick up any successful book and they say that. Let me explain. You've heard it before. Sayings like it's lonely at the top. Why is that? Well, it's because most other people have fallen off course or have decided that what they have to give up in order to get what they want isn't worth it to them, right? So what are some things that you can do to, to that, that others aren't willing to do? Some of them are simple things. I wrote down being the first one in, last one to leave. If you're, if you're building a strong company and you wanna set a great example, be the first one in, be the last one to leave. Now, of course, as time goes on, one of the nice things about any business, you develop the luxury of not having to be the first one in or the last one to leave. But when you're in full growth mode, when you're, when you're taking off, when you are trying to convince people to follow you, you better set the example of being the first one in, the last one to leave. Getting in the pit with your people, doing things that most aren't willing to do to achieve great success. Getting in the pit, I call it getting in the pit, meaning getting in the cubicles, getting out there on the floor, on the sales floor, getting on the phones, putting a headset on, right? Doing things that the other leaders aren't willing to do. Why aren't they willing to do it? Number one, they've never mastered it, they've never learned it, or it's too, they're too good for it, right? Their ego says, I don't need to go back to that. Well, how can you possibly ask somebody to do something if you're not willing to show them that you do it? Showing, not explaining, there's a big difference. Showing someone how to do something, not explaining to them how to do something. Allowing people to shadow you, right? You're going on a listing consultation. You're going on a buyer consultation. You want to build your team's sales skills. Allow them to shadow you or allow them to shadow your best people. All right. We've always had, we, we have a rule with our ISA team. If one of our inside sales associates sets an appointment and the outside sales associate takes the appointment, the OSA is, has to be okay with letting the ISA shadow them. Investing in your people, time, money, exposure, personal sacrifices, weekend strategy sessions, doing things on Saturday mornings when everyone else is, is still laying in bed, things about thinking about how to build the business. Okay, the best, the best day of the week to do strategy stuff is on Saturdays or Sundays. Why? Because there's no distraction. I gave an example here. Again, going back to develop the understanding, you have to do the things that most others aren't willing to do. Okay. Don't just hire us to train your ISAs, right? We get the question all the time. Will you guys just train my ISAs? I don't want to do this prospecting stuff, this stuff. Our response is always this. By the way, sure, we'd love to train your ISAs. However, we'd rather train you so you don't ever have to hire us again. We'd rather train you to be an expert on the phones or an expert at A or B or C. So that way you don't have to hire us and you can put together your own training manual and teach your own people. I wrote down number two, millionaire real estate leaders, are physically and mentally prepared to make sacrifices and treat the, trade the things they want now for what they want most. They're physically and mentally prepared to make sacrifices and trade the things they want now for what they want most. What does this mean? This means that not only will you have to develop a mindset that is strong enough to defer instant gratification and reward, but you'll have to develop a mindset that is strong enough to see a majority of the leaders in the industry going one direction and you going the opposite way. You're comfortable doing the thing that no one else is willing to do. An example, okay, we've always, we've always believed in New Year's Day prospecting, you know, where our associates come in at nine or 10 in the morning. We call, you know, most markets, there's anywhere from 250 to over 1,000 expires on New Year's Day. New Year's Day, every year, no matter what, I'm in at nine o'clock with our people. I'm on the phones with them. It doesn't matter what's going on at night. Obviously, I know the ball is dropping the night before. 
several years in a row, I've gone on golf trips with my friends. You know, we'd go from, say, the 28th of December until January the 3rd or the 4th. When did I go? Well, I'd go on the 28th, but I'd come back on the 31st. And I'd make sure that I was getting the right amount of sleep and ready to go on the 1st. And then at 5, 6, 7 p.m. on the 1st, I'm flying back down to Florida. Why is that? Well, well, why couldn't you just zoom in, Jeff? Why couldn't you just show them that you're making calls? Why not make calls from Florida, right? Why would you fly back? Because I need to be in the pit with my people. Okay, I can't show that I'm too good for them. I can't show that, that hey, you're back slaving away while I'm out enjoying myself. I never understood why leaders in the real estate industry are posting so often on Facebook of all the fun and cool things that they're doing while their people are back working. Okay, that's not a good look. Next, I wrote down number three. They are mentally prepared for an incredibly high amount of rejection. They are mentally prepared for an incredibly high amount of rejection. The amount of success anyone achieves is directly related to the amount of rejection they're able to withstand. Let me repeat that. The amount of success a leader in this industry achieves is directly related to the amount of rejection they are able to withstand. So make failure and rejection a welcome part of the process. I'll never understand why someone has an emotional reaction or response to something like rejection. While rejection can feel incredibly personal, I get it. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm not saying here I love rejection. Okay, I used to have a sign above my phone. It said, the more rejection I get, the more money I make, right? And I share with our agents, hey, guys, the more rejection you're getting, the better, right? So the emotional response, by the way, is what cripples us and stops us from going further. We must be prepared to withstand a high amount of rejection to achieve a high amount of success. The millionaire leader is the person who has everything else happen to them, just like everyone else, but you would never know it. A millionaire re real estate leader in this industry has all the crap, the recruiting, the retention, the prospecting, the mailings, people not showing up to events, pe more people showing up to events, objections from agents, personal problems with agents, personal issues with agents. The millionaire real estate leader has all that stuff happening to them. Like we all do. It's part of the industry. The difference is you can't tell that it's going on. You can't tell that it's getting to them. You can't tell that there's an issue with it. And gosh darn it, your people better not be able to tell that either. You have to remain the consummate pro, the consummate positive reinforcement constantly. Next, I wrote down millionaire real estate leaders have a strong relationship to failure. They have a strong relationship to failure, meaning understand that you will fail often, but it's what you learn and how quickly you bounce back that will determine the trajectory of your success. What most people assume about highly successful people is that they have it easy or they must not ever fail or that they're just really good at whatever they're doing. Well, when really the only reason, they've just developed the right attitude towards failure. To a millionaire, failure is feedback, not a life sentence. Failure is the feedback loop that we use to know what to tweak, to know how to proceed and how to build something bigger, faster, stronger, better. In some ways, the more successful you are, the more you love failure because it highlights your weak points and gives us a chance to learn how to patch it up so it doesn't happen in the future. Okay, develop a strong relationship with failure. I wrote down in my early days, I'll never forget, probably the first three, four months on the job, I was called into the principal's office. I was called into my broker's office and I felt like I was about to be fired. Why is that? Because I, I was making agents in the office cry. I mean, literally they would share stories about agents that would call them crying because of how I was behaving as a leader in the office. Well, how was I behaving as a leader of an office? How was I, how was I failing? Two things. Number one, I had a huge ego. And number two, I lacked empathy. When you have a huge ego and you lack, lack empathy, you can't connect with them. There's no possible way with an ego and lack of empathy that you can connect with people. And I'll never forget, that was my first leadership lesson on failure. And now what am I doing in every case? I'm showing empathy. I'm, I'm learning more. I'm asking deeper questions, things that I didn't do in the past. I wrote down millionaire trait number five. They view discipline as a tool to help them rather than a restriction or a punishment. See, if you want to have agents who are disciplined with their time, you need to be disciplined with yours, at least in the morning. We say all the time, own the morning, win the day. If you can master what happens from the time you get up until lunchtime, everything else falls into place. By the way, we will be spending an entire session on having the, a perfect real estate leader schedule and a perfect real estate agent schedule. 
So I'm going to walk you through what a real estate leader schedule should look like each day. And then also what a top producer schedule should look like each day. So you can turn around and share that with your people. I wrote down number six millionaire real estate leaders of today have a very, very, very short memory. I jokingly say this one I was gifted with because it just naturally happens that I have a short memory. We have a saying right out, right out on the wall, right outside my door here that says flip the switch at the door. Meaning it doesn't matter what happened to you on your way into the office. It doesn't happen to, it doesn't matter what happened to you at your most recent closing. It doesn't matter what happened on that phone call as you were driving in, flip the switch at the door, right? You, you got a little switch on your back and you flip it. As soon as your feet hit that porch and your hand hits that door, you flip that switch. Why do I flip the switch? Because if I'm dwelling on things that happened to me on the way in or happened to me last night or happened to me this morning, then guess what? It's going to stunt my growth for today. I wrote down, why dwell on things? Why, why share things with others? Why per perpetuate? You realize when you're, you're getting your coffee and you're sharing what happened to you this morning or what happened to you last night, all you're doing is perpetuating. And watch this. Try being productive while dwelling on something. Try being positive while dwelling on something. It's not possible. Here's what happens. Something happens to you, you analyze it, you observe it, and you move on. You analyze, observe, assess, you move on. Got to have a short memory in this industry, especially when you're a leader. Next, I wrote down millionaire real estate leaders in this business view their time as their most valuable asset, which they cannot get back once it's wasted. Millionaire real estate leaders are insane with their time. Okay. I wrote down since you claim to be CEO, why don't you start behaving like one? It's so interesting to me. You know, real estate agents have on their business cards. CEO. Okay, CEO of what? All right, it's you and an assistant. Okay, introduce me to your board of directors. Go ahead and introduce me, introduce me to your managers that report to your board of directors. You're a salesperson, for gosh sakes. And by the way, you're in real estate, when you're in real estate leadership, you're also a salesperson, right? You're selling people on why they should follow you and how you're going to help them be successful. All right, so if you're going to claim to be a CEO, you're going to put it on your signature because it looks cool to your friends. You're going to put it on your business card because it show because you can you can claim that you're a CEO of something. Then gosh darn it, act like one with your time. Well, how do I act like one with my time? You get in at the same time every day. Be an example. You schedule things in 15 minute increments instead of one or two hour increments. I never understood why I always see agents meeting with lenders or meeting with partners or even brokers, owners in this industry, meeting with title people or home warranty people or, or lenders. Why do you need to give them an hour, right? I, I give everybody 15 minutes. I can accomplish four times the same amount of activity in one hour than the average leader in our industry because they're giving everyone an hour, right? Here's another one. Think about, well, Jeff, I like, you know, I, I do my recruiting on lunch on lunch. Well, have you ever thought about having two lunches a day? Yeah, why not, number one, have a 30-minute lunch, do one at 11.30, do one at 12.30. Now, of course, you're going to have to eat light, but look at that. You now have the opportunity to have 10 lunches a week with recruits, 10 lunches a week with potential agents that could work for your firm by doing two a day, one at 11.30, keep them to 30 minutes. 30 minutes is plenty of time, especially if you're going to Panera. You know, I'm not recommending you go to fast food, and I'm not recommending you go to a steakhouse. Nobody wants to be bloated for the rest of the day, but think about your time today, all right? It is your most valuable asset. What you can accomplish in 15 minutes does not need an hour. You schedule yourself an hour, and then next thing you know, you end up taking an hour and 20 minutes. Instead, schedule meetings for 15-minute increments. All right, consider and 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 consider even the one-on-ones and meetings with your agents. 15-minute increments. Everything can be done in 15 minutes. Okay, there's study after study, by the way, on that concept. Number eight, millionaire real millionaire real estate leaders in the business today. They are protective of the company they keep. They're very protective of the company they, feed, they keep. You've heard this before. You are an average of the five people you most associate yourself with. So mastermind with other leaders who are doing, not have done, okay? Get around people who are doing it right now, not people who have done it at some point in time. I wanna be around people who are succeeding right now. Spend time with your most productive people, not your least productive. Have an extra layer of leadership in place so you have more time with your top 20%. What do most leaders do in the real estate industry? They spend all their time with their bottom 20, but with their bottom 80%. Well, yeah, but my top 20% are so busy. Those are the people that you need to be spending your time with. Okay, those are, gonna, those are your greatest assets. Those are your best voices. Those are your best examples. Why are you spending all your time with your bottom 80% when you should be spending it with your top 20? Well, how do you do that? Add a layer of leadership if you have to. Get somebody else to help you with that group. 
And if you're not at a point where you can hire someone to help you with that group, well, then you have to be better at your own time management. Next, number nine, I wrote down traits, habits, mindset of a millionaire real estate leader. They have a strong, unwavering focus in the industry. They have a strong, unwavering focus, which means they do not get swept up in get-rich-quick schemes. And they understand the value of sticking to one thing time over time. They don't get easily swayed by shiny objects, and they understand that the road always isn't the most exciting one. This road, by the way, okay, the boring and mundane, but usually ends up being the most profitable one. Number 10, they put zero stock in the thoughts and opinions of others. Now, this one's a little controversial, right? Because, well, okay, we're not saying you're putting zero stock in in people that you look up to or people that you need advice from. I'm talking about people that are doing less than you or not doing anything at all. Rather than chasing, listen to me very clearly on this, rather than chasing validation or praise from the outside, they keep their head down and work. If they get some form of recognition, it's more or less seen as an afterthought or a bonus, okay? And it's not the driving force behind why they're doing it. I'll repeat that. They put zero stock in the thoughts or opinions of others. And rather than chasing validation or praise from the outside, they keep their head down and work. If they get some form of recognition, it's more or less like a bonus. Oh, that's an afterthought, sure. But it's not the driving force behind why they're doing what they're doing. Number 11, they value advice from those that have not only gone, but are still currently doing. This is what drives me crazy about all these experts in the field today, all these coaches in the field today. Half of them have never sold real estate. The other half are, 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 are leaders of real estate, aren't on the ground right now, and a certain percentage of them aren't even in the business anymore. So why would I take advice from somebody that's not doing right now? I don't understand it. Why would you take advice from someone that did something 10 years ago? What, what happened 10 years ago doesn't work today. Number 12, they have a strong why and vision outside of just themselves. They understand the big picture, how they fit into it, and work tirelessly towards creating something that changes lives, rather than just changing their own life. Their vision is bigger than themselves, okay? Think about your own personal mission. What is your company mission? What is your, state, what is your statement to the community, okay? You heard me talk about in session one, our mission statement is living unreal experience to deliver one. I mean, we are big on living unreal. That's all we do. How can we help our associates live unreal lives while they're here and outside of work, while they're at home with their families? What is your personal mission? What is your mission statement? Do your people know what your personal mission is? Do your people know what your mission statement is? I can tell you firsthand, I struggle with that and I did not do a good job of it. I actually thought the only reason why people came to work for me was because they wanted to learn how to make a bunch of money. And so my mission was, let's just help everyone make a bunch of money. Well, as time went on, I learned that it's more, it's more than just money. It's more than just income. All right. So what is your mission? What is your why and your vision outside of just yourself and your people? Number 13, I wrote down millionaire real estate leaders know when to stop and know when to say no to things that take them off their path. Okay. It goes back to your discipline with time, which we're going to spend an entire future session on. Next, number 14. Millionaire real estate leaders rarely know the latest news or gossip going on. They rarely know what's happening, you know, who's, who's dating who, better yet, they don't care. These type of people often seem cold or disinterested in the juicy gossip because they understand that every, watch, listen to this, every minute they spend focusing on something that has nothing to do with them distracts them from their ultimate mission. So why are we talking about it? Furthermore, this group spends more time talking about ideas. The millionaire real estate leaders are talking about ideas and concepts and rarely spend time talking about people, all right? They're normally the last to know. Now, by the way, there is value in your organization having people who are your eyes and ears, okay? But you just have to train them to sift through. They have to have a little bit of a filter to know what is important to share with you and what is not. Well, because if they shared everything with you, They'd be in your office every day sharing with you all the juicy gossip. No, no, no. If it's going to move the business forward or it's going to move the business backward, I need to know. Other than that, it doesn't matter. All right? So now here's the thing. In addition to them sharing with you information that's going to move the business forward or backwards, you also need to train them on how to respond when people are 
are gossiping or being dramatic or being negative, right? You can't just say, yeah, you're, you're going to be my eyes and ears. So give me, give me all the juicy stuff. No, they need to put an end to it. They need to put a stop to it. Right. Right. They, 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 they can't perpetuate that type of language. Next number 15 thoughts of a real estate leadership millionaire. They believe that no one succeeds alone and that the lattice effect is real. This is actually straight from a uh, quantum leap, which is a program that Gary Keller developed. They believe that no one succeeds alone and the lattice effect is real, which means you, we all have wealth determiners and wealth determinants. That's probably not even a word, but it makes sense. Meaning we all have someone that we're determining wealth for, and we all have someone that is determining wealth for us. Okay. Think about it. You're a leader in the industry. Who are you determining wealth for? Now, if you're an independent, I, I've always had concern for those that are independent brokers. Okay, because in gener gener generally speaking, you don't have anyone that you report to, A, and B, you don't have anyone that's earning income off of your success. Well, yeah, but I get to keep all my commissions. You know, I, I don't have to pay any franchise fees. This isn't about being with a franchise or being not. Yes, that may be true. You may get to keep your commissions or not have to pay franchise fees, but then you need to seek out someone, whether it be a mentor or a coach or someone that will benefit from your success. Right now you could say coaching. Okay, fine. There's tons of coaching programs out there. That is someone that will benefit from your success because there's a monthly fee and you'll continue to pay them as long as you're successful. But if you're a solo agent, you're an independent broker, you don't have someone that you're determining wealth for, then I suggest you go try to find someone that can. Well, why is that? Well, by the way, that's why I never understood. I've, I've never been a fan of now, of course, if there's agents on this, you're saying, well, yeah, but I love getting hundred percent of my commission. I've never been a fan of the 100% commission model. Now, don't get mad for those of you that own franchises that offer that model, which is many today. But the reason why I'm not a fan of that is because once you've made all you can make off of an agent, well, then what's the incentive to help them get any better? What's the incentive to help them grow bigger? Now, of course, you say, well, reputation and signs in the yard and so forth. But let's be honest. If that was the case, then why is all the training in the industry designed to help newbies get to 1 million, 2 million, 3 million production? Because in most organizations, that's where the company is making their money. Once an agent does three, four, five million, the company stops making money off of them. And I never understood that's not a benefit to real estate agents, by the way. You understand if you're an agent on this and you're bragging about your, your, your 90, 10 or your 100% split once you hurt, hit a certain level, keep in mind that that probably means that somebody isn't looking after you as closely to help you succeed. The lattice effect is real. We all have people that we determine wealth for, and we all have people that determine wealth for us. Choose your, watch this, choose your wealth determiners wisely. Choose the people that you are determining wealth for wisely. Choose the people that determine wealth for you wisely. Number 16, millionaire real estate leaders understand how to present the time value of money. They understand how to present the time value of money to their people. Okay, I wrote down in our industry, this comes down to the split versus net conversation. They view net, not just what they get to keep in their pocket, but the time at the end of the day, because again, it goes back to understanding and valuating, valuing our greatest asset, which is time. When is the last time you explained to your associates that your goal is to not give them a better commission split? Your goal is to help them net more income. Your goal is to help them have more taxable income. I know this doesn't sound so great, but your goal is to help them have more money to pay Uncle Sam, right? Because the more money you make, the more money you're paying them. Your goal is to help them have more time with their family. It's not just about commission splits. People want a higher net income. Net income. People, want a high, people place a high value. Millionaire real estate agents place a high value on their time. If you can show me as a broker, owner, leader in the industry, how I can get more time back to go invest in real estate, to go spend more time with my family, then you are a broker I want to be in business with. They understand how to present the time value of money. It's the split versus net conversation. Uh, there's a couple, there's an article I did on this conversation. It's out there somewhere. Uh, you can probably Google it. If you just search Jeff Glover split versus net conversation, um, you'll find it. Anyways, number 17, they strive to never be the smartest or richest person in a room. They seek out being in business with people with a very large vision because they know that they'll never hit a ceiling so long as they're aligned with someone with a big vision. Well, how do you get that? Especially for you solo agents or, or, or independents. You have to go to events. You have to surround yourself with people that are thinking bigger, faster, better, so forth. Number 18, millionaire real estate leaders are extremely self-aware. 
They know their weaknesses. They know how to hire someone to help. They know they're not practicing in their, and playing in their weaknesses. They're hiring out their weaknesses. They're playing in their strengths. They're very self-aware. Number 19, they have the capacity to stay focused on their goals despite all the distractions. Once they set a goal, they put blinders on and virtually nothing else matters besides achieving their goals or staying on track. Meaning, they don't get distracted by shiny objects. There's no such thing as FOMO with millionaire leaders in this industry. There's no such thing as FOMO at all. Why is that? Because I know what I need to do and I'm focused on what I need to do. They possess a very intense level of concentration for the things that are most important to them, okay? Use weekends. If you, if, if you get too many distractions in your office, too many got a minute, too, too many people walking in, use weekends for stuff like this. Number 20, they understand, and I know we're getting short on time, so I'm gonna go through these fairly quickly. They understand how to separate feeling from fact and only give life to things that matter most to them in relation to their focus and goals. They understand how to separate feeling from fact and only give life to things that matter most to them in relationship to their focus and their goals. They understand that feelings are temporary and they come and go. This is, this is we receive information, we pick and choose what we decipher, what we listen to and what we take action on. Millionaire real estate leaders understand not everything requires a response, okay? You can, you can analyze the situation and move on from it if it doesn't require a response. We don't have to get caught up in the emotion of things. Oh, I love this one, 21, especially for you leaders out there in the industry. Those who possess a millionaire leadership mindset understand deferred payout and understand that they'll have to put in a lot of work up front to reap the rewards much later down the road. If only we could train our salespeople on this, okay? Millionaire real estate leaders aren't asking things like, what's in it for me? They're not watching the clock when they hit their 40 hours. They have the mentality of whatever it takes and however much it takes. And they don't let up or ask, what's in it for me? Because they understand that what they're working on and building will pay dividends in the end. Okay, we have to teach our salespeople this. There's plenty of books out there. John Maxwell is one of my favorites, 21 Laws of Leadership. He talks about that. 17 Laws of Indisputable Teamwork. It's a book that we're going through with our team right now. You can break that into chapters and turn it into a 17-week program if you want your team to be better team players. 17 Laws of Teamwork by John Maxwell. Number 22, millionaire real estate leaders understand how to withstand temporary pain or discomfort for long-term pleasure or payout. Similar to the point before, they don't expect things to be easier every single day, and that doesn't affect our mindset. They understand that the work they do will go through seasons like anything else in life, and they'll persist through tough times to help reap the benefits down the line. They understand how to withstand temporary pain or discomfort for that long-term payout. Number 23, they have a very recognizable trait of mental toughness in all situations regardless of the outcome. They have a very recognizable trait of mental toughness in all situations regardless of the outcome. Challenges don't phase them. They aren't worried about who likes them, who doesn't. Definitely not worried about rejection, as you heard. They have likely overcome a lot of adversity to get to where they are today, and they understand that adversity has become an advantage to them. They have the ability to sit with a great deal of mental discomfort and not move away from it, thus making them mentally resilient when most people would give up. Mental toughness in all situations. Number 24. They understand that winning and recognition, gosh, I love this one, winning and recognition are part of the process on the way to the vision, not the vision itself. So many fly-by-night, not even fly-by-night, successful real estate agents are doing things and, and real estate brokers and leaders are doing things for recognition. Since when does, does, does Facebook monitor your bank account? Okay, who cares how many likes or comments and shares you get? That recognition isn't going to increase your bank account. Instead. Their goals, millionaire real estate leaders, their goals go way beyond recognition, okay? But being recognized along the way is a natural byproduct of their intense focus and hard work. The recognition is just a byproduct. Number 25, we got a few more left. They possess an incredibly abundant mindset, and because of this, they're always willing to give and share. There's no such thing as, oh, this is my information, can't share with anyone. You know, oh, nope, nope, got to keep this here, okay? They realize that the more they give, they, that life is full circle. It will show up later. So you don't know how, 
how, you don't know how much, you don't know how to deposit any by sharing and giving and providing. It'll show up later and you don't ask for anything in return when you do. That's abundance. Number 26, they have a high level of personal accountability and can take responsibility in all situations for as much as they possibly can. Those who possess a millionaire mindset don't believe in making someone right or wrong. They're more focused on the truth and setting the course correct. And if it means taking more responsibility, they'll do it. The best of the best leaders today will take responsibility for as much as possible. They don't ever point a finger. Okay. I, I remember hearing early on, every time you point a finger, there's three fingers pointing back at you. They are responsible for everything in their life and in their situation. Number 27, last two. Those who possess a millionaire mindset in real estate leadership today have a great level of urgency with all that they do, and it shows up in how they take action. Those who possess a millionaire mindset have a great level of urgency with all that they do, and it shows up in how they take action. Okay, this is probably one that our staff, I drive them crazy because everything's, we have to take action on this now. We have, to, we have to focus on this now. We have to shift to this now. We have to get after this right now. Why are we waiting? Again, this comes back down to the greatest asset of millionaire leaders, their time, and how they don't like to waste it. Therefore, because they don't know how much time they'll have on this physical earth, they believe in doing everything with urgency. We don't know how much time we have left. We don't know if we're going to have tomorrow. Everything we should do, we should do with a high level of urgency. Stop with this analysis paralysis crap. Finally, number 28, last but certainly not least, the wealthiest people in the real estate industry today all talk about either their mentors or their coaches. So if you're watching this and you're thinking, well, I don't really have a mentor, then go get a coach. I don't care who it is. It can be us. It can be anybody. Okay, this isn't about selling you our coaching. This is about everyone has to have a mentor or a coach. You go to any event, panel after panel after panel. Do you have a coach? Yep. Do you have a coach? Yep. Do you have a coach? Yep. Who's your mentor? Who's this? Who's that? Everyone has a a mentor or a coach today. They understand that someone somewhere has come before them and has either led others on the path of greatness or are currently walking it themselves, which of course, you know, me and leading by example, I think is the number one form of leadership that a leader can provide to their people. So there you have it, 28 points on developing the real estate broker, owner, lead agent, millionaire mindset and habits. All right, now that we have laid the foundation, Okay. Now that, now what I want you to do, I want you to go back and look at your notes and I want you to circle one. Okay. Just, just spend 30 seconds, 60 seconds doing it right now. Go ahead, flip through your notes. And I want you to circle with your pen, seven, 10, 15, 20, however many times there's one in here that spoke to you. There's one point in here that you can make a change in your business, a change in your life, a change in your daily routine, a change in your activities that will put you on a stronger path to being a better leader in the industry. Now, of course, most of you that are watching this are already leading people. You already have a successful office or a successful brokerage or a successful team. But I promise you there's something in there that you can take action on, number one. Number two, the second thing I want you to do, I want you to take these notes and I want you to type them up. And during your next team meeting, during your next sales meeting, your next powwow, your next huddle, whatever you do with your team, I want you, just as I shared these points with you, I want you to share them with them. Now, you can add some, you can subtract some. I don't care what you do, the notes. You can claim it to be your information. I don't care. But use this as material in your next training session. Now, you'll notice as we go through this program, I'll be talking a lot about use this with your agents, use this with your agents, because these are things that I'm doing. So guess what? This is stuff that I'm turning into content to share with our agents, and you should be doing the same thing. Session two is in the books next week, all right? Now, two things. Number one, if you, if, if you want to share yourself on screen, pictures, quotes, whatever, make sure you're using our hashtag, hashtag GloverU, hashtag ReLead. Next week, we're going to open up with another winner of some swag. I'm looking at a Nike hat and uh, a Live on a Real t-shirt over here uh, that we'll be giving away next week. So if you use hashtag GloverU, use hashtag ReLead. Between now and next week, we go in and search for that. Speaking of next week, we are back on track next week, Wednesday at 1130 Eastern Standard Time. Now, I know we've got hundreds of you joining us from around the country. Next week, Wednesday, 1130 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Go use the hashtag, love you, hashtag re 